Now, we showed this to you live as it was just unfolding. President Biden is co-hosting the second summit for democracy today. Earlier, he announced massive monetary commitments from the U.S. aimed at bolstering democratic programs all across the globe. Now, working in close cooperation with the United States Congress, we plan to add another $690 million for new funding for the presidential initiative over the next two years. And over the course of three years, my administration intends to work with Congress to commit $9.5 billion across all our efforts to advance democracy around the world. We're all safer when that occurs. Well, the U.S. is not the only host. It's co-hosting the virtual multi-day event with Costa Rica, the Netherlands, South Korea, and Zambia. Around 120 global leaders in total have been invited to participate in the summit. Joining us now for more on this is CBS News senior White House correspondent Weijia Zhang. Weijia, always great to see you. Um, we were listening in to the president as he was getting um, this summit underway. But specifically, what's the point? How do you aim to strengthen democracy as a U.S. president? Um, and how significant is that considering what's happening in Israel, as we just heard, in Brazil and in Mexico? Well, Errol and Lana, it is always great to be with you, too. And President Biden actually began talking about this when he was a candidate, because you'll remember during the previous administration, former President Trump's foreign policy was centered around the idea of America first. And candidate Biden said it was time to make America the leader again, but said America could not do that alone, which is why he proposed the idea of hosting this summit now for the second time in his presidency. As you can see here, the pillars that he um, is addressing include strengthening democracy and defending against authoritarianism, addressing and fighting corruption, promoting respect for human rights, which, of course, all of these things are highlighted as Russia invades Ukraine. Um, and that is just one example of the president uh, carrying out some of his promises because he continues to say many times that, um, you know, when people ask Republicans specifically why the U.S. should continue uh, writing checks to Ukraine, the president says it's not just about what's happening there, but this is about standing up against autocracies and showing that uh, the Western world will not stand for the dismantling of other uh, nations and the way that they run. And so this is a very important event for President Biden. As we just saw, he uh, is talking with a little bit of a raspy voice. He says he has a cold today, but this is uh, one of a signature pieces of his uh, foreign policy to focus on the importance of global democracy. Hey, Ouija, in the wake of the Nashville school shootings, we've heard the president renewing calls to pass the assault weapons ban, but he also says that he is powerless to take action on guns without the help of Congress. I first want to play uh, what he had to say. I have gone the full extent of my executive authority to do on my own anything about guns. The Congress has to act. So, we just fact check us. Is there anything that the president could be doing on gun reform on his own? Or is there any will in Congress to actually take up uh, the president's call? Well, the fact is the president can't change the law. And right now it is legal to purchase assault weapons in the majority of U.S. states, except for nine in Washington, D.C., that has banned them. So he can't uh, sign anything to outlaw them in those other states. It is up to the states, unless there's a national ban, which only Congress can pass and so far has failed to do so, which is why he continues to say his hands are tied when it comes to what he believes will really make a difference, which is banning assault weapons. Weapons, um, he says that lawmakers have to do more. But as we have seen now for decades, they have been able to reach a compromise on that. However, we should mention that just last June, the president did sign the most significant gun reform bill in nearly 30 years, which gave billions of dollars for mental health support for states to implement those so-called red flag laws, which um, allows courts to temporarily seize weapons if someone is deemed a threat to themselves or other people. So I think the president here is just putting the onus on lawmakers. He wants to make clear that he has done what he can through executive action. In fact, recently he just did that after that 
awful um, shooting in Monterey Park, California, uh, during the Lunar New Year celebration, which, of course, you will both remember having covered it. He did issue another executive order uh, for the attorney general to hold gun sellers accountable when they don't uh, check backgrounds and they're supposed to do so. But again, these are just sort of things on the periphery. When it comes to the uh, immediate action that the president says is needed, banning assault weapons, making red uh, flag laws a nationwide effort, uh, you know, again, it is up to Congress. And that is why we keep hearing him saying the same thing over and over after these mass shootings, because he feels like he's done everything he can. And had, he said as much yesterday, very frankly. Yeah, look, that's an important reminder. Uh, the president is the most powerful, you know, politician in the country, but that individual can only do so much when it comes to the laws possibly necessary to prevent mass shootings. Uh, Weijia Zhang, great to see you. Thanks for joining us from the White House today. You're welcome.